Hi, I'm Sean from Bliss Magazine, and today we're spending the day at uh, Rake Hand Distillery, formerly known as uh, Big Rig Distillery. So thank you for having us today. If you guys could take a second to introduce yourselves, and then we'll uh, hear a little bit about your story and try some of your many products. You betcha. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm Jeff Stewart. I'm the owner of Big Rig Distillery. My wife and I own this place. Uh, we've got a good staff that work here. We've got a couple of them here with us today. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm the general manager and distiller here. I help Jeff on the floor making the alcohol and uh, this is uh, Joanne here. Yeah, I'm Joanne Keller and I'm the inventory manager. So we've got quite an array of products. Uh, we're the first distil craft distillery to get going in the greater Edmonton area. Uh, we've been going for about a year and a half now. Uh, this really just became a legal thing to do not that long ago. We're one of the first ones to get licensed in the province. We make about 22 different products, which is pretty ambitious for a startup craft distillery. Most only make vodka for the first three years while they wait for their whiskey to age. Yep. But to us, that seemed like putting all of our eggs in one basket. So we wanted to have kind of something for everybody. So we make a premium vodka. We make a bunch of flavored vodkas, about 10 of them. We make three different kinds of gin. We make uh, a rye whiskey. We make a bourbon style whiskey. We make a scotch style whiskey and a blended whiskey. We make a rum from sugar beets that grow in Tabor. Uh, and we make something kind of like Bailey's that we call Double Double. The big thing for us is to source all of our input products locally though. So we get probably 75% of our grain from the first farm on the other side of the overpass. Uh, we use that as the base for all of our vodkas and all of our gins. Uh, we got some samples for you to try, which yeah. I think you're keen on, right? Very <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to start with our Wild Rose Gin. Uh, so this gin uh, isn't your traditional uh, piney gin. The main ingredient in it is actually uh, the wild rose hip and the wild rose petals. Uh, we do have juniper in there because that's a requirement to be called gin. Uh, we also put crab apples, Saskatoon berries, uh, chamomile, things we go and forage ourselves around yeah. Alberta. So it's a real Alberta gin. Most people will get the floral notes first from it when they taste it. Then you get a little bit of citrus, the apple comes through. Some people will pick up a little bit of a black licorice flavor, other people don't pick that up depending on how good your tongue is. And you don't really get the, the juniper taste from it till about 20 seconds after you swallow it. So it kind of comes back yeah. up your throat. So it's a little bit of a flavor explosion. We'll give you that one first. <laughs> See what you think of that. Get your palate ready to go. Definitely black licorice. You get the black licorice yeah. on it? Yeah, so you get right the, you the, get the good tongue. tongue. There yeah, you go. Right yeah, you betcha. So, so this is uh, a type of gin that's called a complex floral gin. It's a style of gin that evolved in North America as a cocktail gin. Okay. This isn't the type of gin you're supposed to use to make a, a gin martini with. Uh, yeah. You do need more of a piney gin with that. We also make a piney style gin, and we make a lemon gin, which I that was very good. think you tried before we went on camera. You got into that. See that? Try it. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to try is our sugar beet brum. Uh, sure. I'm not going to have any of these. No. So. Uh, this is a rum that we make from sugar beets that grow in the Tabor Lethbridge area. Uh, because it comes from sugar beets, it's a bit sweeter than a traditional rum, but it still has all the molasses notes and the caramel notes and the vanilla notes in there. Uh, we're not legally allowed to call it rum. Uh, a rum has to be from 100% sugar cane uh, to be called rum. So we got a little bit creative with the naming of it. Uh, we were talking with a fellow from the government asking him, well, can we call it sugar beet rum? And he says, no. I said, can we call it beet rum? And he said, no. I said, well, what can we call it? He says, you can call it anything you want, but you can't call it rum. I said, but it is rum. He goes, yeah, I know it's rum, but you can't call it rum. <laughs> so I said, can we put a B on the front of the thing and call it brum? He goes, yeah, go ahead. So we call it brum. And I, try and see what you think. I'm a big, I love rum. Are you? It's, 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 my, it's my favorite. Rum, yeah. <laughs> it is sweet, but it's smooth. Like, uh, that was very good. <laughs> it's really nice just on the rocks. That's kind of how we made it. Yeah, you wouldn't want to sully that with mm -hmm. uh, some coke or that's, something. That's right. what yeah. we were hoping. Yeah. Yeah. I like the Brum name too because uh, the reason we did this business in the first place is my wife and I went on a motorcycle trip to Ohio and we toured a distillery. I'd never even been in one before. And that was the inspiration for our entire business a bunch of years ago, actually. So I think Brum pays <laughs> tribute to the original yeah. motorcycle that's trip. Cool. <laughs> that's cool. uh, we've. Uh, We've gone through this name change here recently, changing yeah. from Big Rig Distillery to Rig Hand Distillery. And so we've had to revamp all of our labels to reflect that name change and our signage and that kind of thing. And Mike does all of our uh, in-house labeling work and all of the graphic arts stuff. So Mike's been busy 
And we talented on more than one level. Absolutely. <laughs> you got creative with the Brum label too. I did, yeah. I put it a motorcycle, a vintage motorcycle silhouette actually. Yeah. Um, again, a little homage to the Brum again. So. And we've also been uh, trying to make our labels a little more uh, reflective of the history of Alberta. So rather than just having plain backgrounds on them, We've got pictures of the Leduc number one just, yeah. uh, rig on there, and, and we've got pictures from uh, from the farm that we buy our grain from on on one of our labels. So we're trying to get a get a little more Alberta taste into our labeling. Well, as well. and pat on the back too, because I know from being a, a buyer of alcohol, um, labels and bottles pop, and it's the bottle or bottle label that attracts most people first. So. You know, credit to the bottle. Too. Absolutely, and the bottle itself pays homage to Leduc Number yeah. One too, right? Yeah, we're in Nisku yeah. here, just ten minutes uh, out of Edmonton, so we're real close. Yeah. And uh, Leduc Discovery Center is just down the road as well. So. Much closer. I live on the north side, and I was here in twenty minutes. Tops. That's, yeah, that's pretty easy with the Henry. Yeah. yeah, you betcha. Yeah. We really want people to to take the time to drive out here, and uh, we'll bring you in the back. We'll tour you right through the entire production on our production floor, and you get to come into the tasting room, have samples. Uh, we've got a little on-site store if people want to buy stuff. So it's a unique experience that you really can't have anywhere else. Yeah. And we want to share that with people. It's different if you go into a liquor store and buy the bottle. And we want you to do that too. Yeah. But if you come here and see how we actually make the stuff, see us actually bottling it, uh, see the mash cooking, it's just that, that neat experience that you can't what get What better way to really understand where your, uh, your purchase is coming from than shaking the hand of the person that uh, made it? Physically, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So before Mike got creative with the labels, the only label we had that was very creative was this label here. And uh, we make whiskeys, but in Canada, whiskeys have to be aged for three years before you're allowed to sell them. So we don't, we've only been open for just shy of two years kind of thing. So we don't have fully aged whiskeys. You can sell them before three years, but you can't call them whiskey. You have to call them a white distillate, which isn't a very attractive yeah, name. Sell that name. <laughs> it's pretty tough, exactly. <laughs> in the United States, they call it white dog distillate. So okay. we happen to have a distillery dog that's ripping around here usually, yeah. Charlie's her name. And on this label, Mike got creative and put a picture of her on there. Um, we think that you can do something interesting with this white dog distillate though. You can age it in the bottle, or oak it in the bottle as we call it. If you put a whiskey in a big barrel and you let it age, the chard inside of the barrel acts like a carbon filter and it makes the liquor smoother the longer that it's in there. The type of wood they make the barrels from is American white oak, and that type of wood has sugar, vanilla, and caramel in it. And over time, that goes out of the wood into the liquor and makes it sweeter, and it turns it from clear to brown. So if you make a batch of, say, a Scotch-style whiskey out of malted barley, and you put it in a big barrel and you let it age for three years like the government says you have to, after three years it's going to be fairly smooth and have a nice amber color to it and be sweeter. If you put that stuff in a smaller barrel, it actually ages faster because yep. you have more surface area wood to liquid. So we just took that idea right into the bottle. And if you can, I don't know if you can see there, Terry, but uh, we've got a piece of a barrel that we've actually cut up, we've charred it, and you can age it in the bottle or oak it in the bottle, give it some of those flavors and some of those colors. We find that at this surface area to volume ratio, it takes about eight weeks and it tastes like it's been in a big barrel for three years. So you can uh, taste it weekly and see where That's it's That's exactly what we do. Experience yeah. the, the, the whiskey as it grows and ages and matures. It's yeah, a it's whole great. chemistry experiment yeah. really is what it is. So uh, we've got a taste of this for you. Uh, this is our mar malted barley distillate. We get our malted barley from Alex, which is about an hour and 10 minutes south of here. Uh, from, from, from Rar? Yes, yeah, from yeah. Rar, you betcha, the uh, Turo. Uh, it's, uh, this is a Highland style, so we haven't put any peat on this. We also have done some peat batches. Uh, to give an eyelet style is scotch. Very smooth. We're pretty yeah, happy with it. It's very smooth, and you can yeah. get the wood flavors coming out of it. Yeah, now. right at the end. Yeah. Sort of roof of my mouth, back of my mouth. Yeah. It gives you an idea of where we're going in the barrel. In the yeah. barrel, you get a little more complex flavors yeah. than this, but it's a way for us to sell a whiskey product before three years, which is important for keeping the lights on and, and yeah, paying yeah. some staff, yeah. right? Well, I'm just being very creative, right, with the uh, being able to age it yourself. We only know of one other distillery that does something like this. How cool is that from a, from a beer geek standpoint where you want to do vertical tastings on a regular basis? Absolutely. And being able to vertical taste the exact same beverage. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you buy a bottle every year. Absolutely. So uh, that's the stuff we're going to have samples for you just straight out of the bottle. Uh, we've got a couple signature cocktails here. Yep. Uh, the first is what we call a mud can. So we're making some reference to the oil industry again. Uh, our top selling product right now is uh, our version of Bailey's. We call it Double Double. Uh, this mud can is a mixture of the Double Double with our espresso vodka. And our espresso vodka is made from our premium vodka with uh, infusion from coffee beans from Transcend Coffee. They're a local coffee bean roaster. Fantastic group of guys over there. Uh, so try this and see what you think. 
the ladies here tend to drink this a little bit from time to time when they're working. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good you're breakfast. You're not working and drinking what you do. <laughs> exactly. Breakfast beverage. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's very, uh, it's very uh, chocolate ice cream. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but done. like Swiss, Swiss chocolate ice cream, really smooth milk chocolate. Yeah. Swiss. The, the Double Double, actually, there's a couple of differences between it and the other cream liquors that are out there. It's uh, rum-based rather than a whiskey-based. Well, you're hitting me right where it hurts there. <laughs> so, it's a little smoother on the palate lots of times, and there's lots of flavors in there. There's chocolate, mocha, vanilla, caramel, yep. all kinds of uh, three coffee flavors, I believe, too, right? Yeah, you oh, betcha. Yeah. I'd say the mocha. Well, maybe, uh, yeah, mocha. Mocha was probably the most prominent, prominent for me. Yeah, so there's lots of stuff it's going good. on in there. It's very good. It's That would be uh, very good on a hot day. It is. <laughs> yeah. Mike puts that stuff on his ice cream, vanilla ice cream sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Put over your ice yeah. cream or apple pie yeah. for yeah. dessert. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it goes good with a lot of things. So that's one of our cocktails. And now the cocktail that we find is the most unique that we've created uh, is from the beverage that we've made that we think is the most unique. And that's a garlic infused vodka. Uh, we've designed this specifically as a vodka for Caesars. And we feel like if you put it with the original Mott's Clamato and a little Matt and Steve Rimmer, that's another Canadian company, you don't really need to add much more than that. And you get a flavored Caesar that you really can't get anywhere else. Uh, this product has been a door opener for us uh, at the Canadian Brew House. Uh, some of the Boston pizzas are carrying it. Yeah. Uh, we've even got some uh, places like Sicilian Pasta Kitchen. Oh, wow. Uh, so the Fairmont's looking at it. So, so it's kind of a, this is our door opener. So yeah. try this, see what you think. Well, we're going to be honest with everyone here, first Caesar ever. Really? So, <laughs> <laughs> hard to compare that. So this tastes like no other Caesar you ever had. Lots of garlic, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Right. Let me grab the bottle here and show you. So we actually have pieces of garlic floating right in the, the bottle. We call it our garlic snow globe. <laughs> uh, the the, the vodka is our premium vodka, and uh, we source the garlic from three local sources. We've got one fellow in the Vistas between here and Beaumont that we get it from. Yeah. There's another guy in Leduc that we get some from, and then we've got a third source now too because we've cleaned those guys out. So we're always looking for Russian red garlic. If anybody's growing it out there, let me know, please. Uh, so those are the tastings we want to show you. I uh, hope you're impressed with it. I am very impressed, very happy. Uh, this was a good time. Thank you for the tour, the time, uh, meeting you all. Um, if you guys are out there and you see uh, Rig Hand or still labeled in some cases Big Rig Distillery, do yourself a favor and pick it up. Uh, you won't regret that purchase. Or even better, come. Come meet them, shake their hands. It's only 10 minutes from Edmonton. Um, take the time, it's worth it. So uh, from Bliss Magazine, I'm Sean. See you next time.